<clears throat> Alright guys, the fog is rolling out and the sun is coming out here. It's getting to be a fine summer day in March here uh, in the isolation chamber of Garfield, Texas. Uh, here on, I honestly have lost track. I, I think it might be a Wednesday. Uh, and I think it might be March 25th, 2020, but uh, the day of the week is making less and less difference as we go through strange times on the planet that you have stumbled into Collapse Chronicles. Uh, my name is Sam Mitchell. This is my little sidekick, Sancho Panza, where what we, well, what we used to do on this channel uh, before things turned weird on the planet. Uh, we used to chronicle uh, things like the collapse of a planet and whatnot, but for <clears throat> when was the last time I did a a video not on the coronavirus? Has it been over a week? So for the third time uh, what I'm going to attempt to do is bring you a story about the collapse of a planet, not about the coronavirus. Uh, I could not get through the last two. I, I'm, gonna, I'm going to make it through to the end of this, and we're going to talk about one story on the planet, not about the coronavirus. Because, I mean, it's a very important story, but I also want to compare the number of views to this story about, uh, you know, compared to the number of views I'm getting on coronavirus stories. So here goes. Uh, wish me luck. Uh, I'm getting ready to commit journalistic suicide by actually coloring outside of the coronavirus box. <clears throat> and I want to congratulate the BBC, the British Broadcasting Company. This is their print division for having the courage to talk about anything on the planet today other than the coronavirus. And we're going to look at the future, what the, the future of the planet uh, has to look forward to with green energy, this hilariously named, again, this is, you know, one of the oxymorons of the 20th century. Uh, well, okay, obviously sustainable development uh, is one of them. But green energy uh, is the other defining uh, oxymoron of the 20th century. I have some bad news for you folks. Anybody believing in green energy, there is no such thing as green energy. The very definition of energy, of the word energy, well, I mean applied to humans in the global industrial economy, uh, the, the, the very word is the opposite of green, just like the very word development is the opposite of sustainable, this is why they are oxymorons. So what does the BBC have to say? Now the BBC generally is very pro-green energy, so I'm glad to see the, that the BBC has the courage to come at us today with this headline, Green Energy Plants Threat to Wilderness Areas. I don't know whether the word plant in this, I don't know if they, they mean the verb or the noun, but anyway, uh, you can work both ways. I like it. That, that, that was actually a good headline. You can work that word either way. Okay, take it away, BBC. <clears throat> Wind, solar, 
and hydropower installations pose a growing threat to key conservation areas, say researchers. Researchers found that over 2,000 green energy plants have been built within the boundaries of the Earth's remaining wilderness, which means they're no longer wilderness. They say that around 17% of renewable energy facilities globally are now located in protected regions, and this is another oxymoron for the 21st century, protected regions. There are no protected regions left on the planet. The very notion of a protected region, meaning protected from human incursion, unless you're talking about Chernobyl, uh, is more and more becoming an oxymoron. Uh, a further 900 plants are now being developed inside key areas of biodiversity. So we've got 2,200 green energy plants already online, 900 more under construction, and this number obviously is going to explode. <clears throat> The amount of renewable energy facilities in use around the world has essentially tripled, tripled over the last 20 years, and you can only imagine it will tr triple again probably over the next five. Anyway, green energy, green energy facilities are in fact often much larger than fossil fuel power plants with wind and solar needing areas of land up to 10 times greater than coal or gas to produce the same amount of energy. Uh, I don't know where this photo of this solar farm is. Anyway. New research says that often the solar, wind, and hydroelectric schemes have been built in areas of environmental significance and pose a threat to key natural habitats. And this is, you know, the BBC, you know, along with the United Nations. Uh, they're, they're still lumping hydroelectric power uh, into green energy uh, as more and more evidence has been pouring in for years that hydroelectric power uh, could very well be the single most environmentally destructive uh, form of energy uh, production on the face of the planet, and yet the United Nations continues to tout uh, hydroelectric power uh, as, as part of its sustainable development goals. Anyway, getting back to the BBC, <clears throat> the team mapped the locations of around 12 1,500 of these green energy installations, they found that more than 2,200 of those were built in wilderness, protected regions, and key biodiversity areas. Some 169 were found in strictly managed protected areas where no development activity at all should occur. This is lead author Jose Rebine from the University of Queensland in Australia. Quote, energy facilities and the infrastructure around them, such as roads and increased 
human activity can be incredibly damaging to the natural environment. These developments are not compatible with biodiversity conservation efforts. Do you think so? Uh, the researchers say that energy projects like solar farms often necessitate new roads and the people who come in to service these green energy installations sometimes, sometimes build settlements near them. So who do you think the biggest offenders on the planet are uh, in this rush to save the planet with green energy, that would be Western Europe. Western European countries are the worst offenders at the moment, with Germany now having 258 facilities and key conservation areas, and Spain has a similar number of installations while China at this time has only 142. You can throw that number out the window, 142. Uh, that number is getting ready to skyrocket. And then of course, if you factored in the number of these uh, giant uh, industrial projects, that the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative is funding in uh, places like Africa and Latin America and Southeast Asia. The, the, the actual honest number of uh, these giant industrial energy schemes being built by China is a hell of a lot bigger than 142. Okay, speaking of that, one big concern from the researchers is the likely expansion of the demand for renewables, particularly in Africa and Asia, you know, being paid for by China, by the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative although you won't read the words Chinese Belt and Road Initiative in this article. It's a huge wizard behind the curtain of this story. <clears throat> Researchers say the number of active renewable energy facilities within important conservation lands could increase by 42% over the next eight years, and I think that is a great uh, underestimate. In countries like India and Nepal, for example, hydropower is seeing a real boom. Nepal alone, Nepal, how big is Nepal? Half the size of the state of Texas, I don't know. Uh, Nepal now has over 100 hydroelectric facilities within its protected areas, while India has 74 now under development inside important conservation zones. Yes. Uh, okay, so this is James, Dr. James Allen from the University of Amsterdam, a senior author on the paper explaining what this looks like on the ground in sub-Saharan Africa, just, just picking one of these. So, in the Silos World Heritage Site in Tanzania, the government has just given the go-ahead for a massive dam, a huge hydropower project, which will really destroy a large area of that national park, close quote. 
Over the past 18 months, there has been a growing concern about the extinction crisis being seen around the world, and much research has been published linking the extinction crisis to climate change. But while many developing countries are doing their best to tackle their rising carbon emissions through switching to renewable energy, the irony, the irony here is that they are increasing the threat to species when these green energy facilities are installed inside protected areas. The authors of the report say that greater care must be taken when planning and permitting renewable facilities, said Dr. Allen. If we let these developments go ahead, the biodiversity will be gone long before climate change starts affecting it. Do you think so? So uh, the study has been published in the journal Global Change Biology. So uh, I'm actually surprised that on a planet of 8 billion people, 34 people uh, are actually responding to this article. And then, of course, you know, you look at uh, other articles from the BBC. You know, they always do this thing, like if you're interested in this article, uh, you check out uh, these others, and virtually every single one of them are about the coronavirus. Uh, coronavirus, 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 coronavirus. I think we get it. And I, I'm not even going, since I promised this wasn't going to be about the coronavirus. And then, of course, one of the articles about the coronavirus is how uh, the great apes over there in Africa uh, are probably uh, going to be decimated, if not outright wiped out by the coronavirus. That, uh, Now that is, uh, that is a, if there is a, uh, a, a story about the direct threat of the virus to populations of, uh, of primates, it is that one, uh, how the coronavirus could spell the extinction of gorillas, chimpanzees and orangutans. Uh, but anyway, I promised I wasn't going to talk about the coronavirus. So anyway, I'm going to shut up now. So if you're one of the 34 people uh, on the planet uh, who uh, give a damn about how renewable energy it is every bit as big a threat uh, to this planet uh, as climate change and a hell of a lot bigger threat to this planet than the coronavirus will ever be. Uh, please take a few seconds to uh, thumb up this video and by all means subscribe to this channel which I'm going to try my best, I cannot promise, I'm going to try my best not to let Collapse Chronicles devolve into just one more uh, repository 
of, uh, of coronavirus crap. Can't promise you that, though. But I gotta wrap up this rant. Listen to the birds. Go eat a couple of corn dogs and get behind my gas-sucking mower because I have to go mow the grass in the peach orchard. <clears throat> Bye, guys.